Hey, this is Danny here from Podcast Stories. Thanks so much for listening, and I'd love for you to get the latest episodes when they're released. So make sure to follow on your favourite podcast app, or hop on over to podcasterstories.com slash listen. If you enjoy the show and want to support it, you can do that at podcasterstories.com slash support to join other supporters just like you. Thanks so much for being part of the Podcast the Stories community. And now, here's this week's episode. You know, it's really not so much about the the money, the success. Success is very important because I think success leaves uh, characteristics and traits that are very important. But when it's so tied up into money, into the financial side of it, then there's these other things that get neglected, these other things that get removed. And when you can va- when you can realize your success based on the lifestyle that you're able to craft, when you're able to value success on how you spend your day, okay, well, now we're on to something. Now we can kind of say, okay, well, let's craft a lifestyle that allows me to have the day did I want to have. Hi, and welcome to Podcaster Stories. Each episode, we'll have a conversation with podcasters from across the globe and share their story, what motivates them, why they started a show, how they grew the show, and more. We'll also talk about their personal lives and some of the things that have happened or made them the person they are today. And now here's your host, Danny Brown. Hi, and welcome to another episode of Podcaster Stories, where we talk to the people behind the voices of the shows we listen to. This week, I'm speaking with Nate Garrison, who's host of the Extraordinary Podcast, a show profiling ordinary people living extraordinary lives. Nate, welcome to the show. I really appreciate you joining us today. Um, How about you tell me a little bit about yourself and the show? Thanks, Danny. I appreciate you having me on, man. This is really exciting. I'm a big fan of the show. I really love uh, listening to it. yeah, so uh, I'm a fellow podcaster, so we're all in this together, and uh, my podcast is called The Extraordinary Podcast, and uh, basically very similar to yours, um, we profile ordinary people living extraordinary lives, and above and beyond that, my primary go- goal as the host is to share stories, stories and experiences that shaped your life, that had an impact, that uh, left some kind of meaning or or moral or something that made an impact in your life. And so, yeah, that's, I've been fortunate enough to know some really neat people and they've been kind enough to grace me with some of their time. And, um, and I've just tried to share their message and share their story. No, and I know I was looking at your show and listening, catching up on some of the episodes. And, and as you mentioned, you've got a wide variety you know, of people on the show and a, and a wide variety of experiences and stories. Um, and I know yourself uh, has got your own story that we'll be talking about later and, and the changes you made. So how did you come up with the show idea? Was that based on your experiences yourself or was this something you always wanted to do anyway? It was kind of an evolution, to be honest with you. Um, and in full disclosure, I would, this the original plan for this show was to be a um, a co hosted show with a buddy of mine, and he's the one who actually came up with the name, the Extraordinary Podcast, and um, and I so we were rolling with it, and as it got down to brass tacks and really ready to execute. He didn't really want to do it anymore. He kind of backed out and said, you know, you take it and run with it. So um, so that's where the name came from. But the premise behind the show was really um, about two years ago, I came up with the idea of a personal development program. Um, and, and, I, and it was through some of the own things that I was going on, or some of the things that were going on in my own life um, that kind of led to that. But um, through the process, I came up with this, or, or through this self-development program, process that I was going through, I came up with this idea of the eight keys to great. And what it was, was I'm, I've got a construction background. I'm way more comfortable swinging a hammer <laughs> than I am behind a microphone, um, as you can tell by the way I talk. Um, but uh, so I, what I did was I took the way that you would remodel your home and applied that to how you would remodel your life. And I broke it down into these eight keys. There's a lot of principles and and a lot of background that goes into developing those eight keys. And so what I wanted to try to do was find people that were exhibiting some of the aspects of those eight keys and then profile them, find out where they got the ideas from, what's working, what's not, and and then then showcase them through the podcast and then use their stories and their experiences to then validate a lot of the program that I was trying to put together. And so that was kind of the impetus for it. And it's just... 
quite honestly, the podcast has grown into a lot more than <laughs> the eight keys are still c- coming along. And they're and like we were just talking before we started recording. We're in beta testing now, which is extremely exciting. But uh, but the podcast has since kind of taken off a little bit. And speaking of the podcast, you mentioned uh, it was originally going to be a, a co-hosted show. So right away, um, I mean, you jumped in, you've done it yourself. So right away, there's a little bit of a challenge there. What's been the biggest challenge of, you know, since the evolution of your show, since you, you started it? Um, and how, how have you kind of overcome that? Um, I think COVID was a real kick in the teeth. So for me, um, audio quality was something that was very important to me. Uh, I'm not an audiophile and I have no background with this, but as a podcast fan, um, I would have I would struggle to enjoy podcasts that you could tell they were voiceover recording or they were uh, you know they were um, they were not live or in person the, the quality of the audio just really turned me off so one of the deals for me was when I started this podcast it was all going to be in person and of course that was great and amazing and again I had some really neat friends that I was able to uh, corner and, and get to interview with me but then COVID hit and that obviously changed the game for everybody and for what it's worth I as the podcast was progressing, I also saw before COVID hit that, you know, the in-person interview wasn't going to necessarily be sustainable. Um, and of course, at that same time, I was blessed with this gift of Squadcast that you and I are both recording on today. And that also changed the game for me because it allowed me to get in-person quality audio but doing it remotely. So overcoming that challenge uh, was huge for me, and it opened up a a whole plethora of different guests that I never considered before uh, and opened up a lot of new windows of opportunity, but one that never would have happened if it weren't for those circumstances. And and speaking of, because as you mentioned, it was going to be an an in-person podcast, and you you said it yourself, uh, I guess there's a a finite amount of people that you can do in your location and your geographical, you know, like um, circle, if you like, to do in-person interviews. Um, so what was your plan before squad, uh, Squadcast or before remote recording, etc.? What was your plan to continue that and to maybe scale that then with the in-person re- interviewing? Well, for what it's worth, I traveled with it. I took it on the road. Um, I basically, my new, my plan originally was to identify a city and then go to that city and and get as many interviews there as I could. And so the first trip was out to um, Denver, Colorado, and I was able to uh, line up some really neat guests and um, knocked out about a half a dozen the first day or the first two days, and then got a couple more that just stumbled into my lap as a result of me letting the world know, hey, I'm going to be in Colorado doing these podcast interviews. And um, so that was my first experience, and it worked out really well and uh, better than expected, quite honestly. And then it became this thing where I was like started identifying these all the towns I wanted to go to and who could I get while I was there and said so the next one was to Salt Lake City and well just to really the state of Utah because I ended up putting about 800 miles on my rental car <laughs> in a few days of just bouncing around the state catching interviews and again I got to stay with friends I was able to do it really inexpensively on a on a you know on a really cheap dime and the experience and the memories from it were amazing. So it was like, well, that's a model I could follow. I could get into this. This could be a lot of fun. And then again, like I said, COVID hit, so <laughs> it changed things. But I was I was really – and for what it's worth, I have intentions and am still in the process of getting back to that format as well. Hmm. Look out, New Orleans, here I come. Oh, New Orleans, that would be pretty cool. And you get some really good vibes behind you there when you're recording now, for sure. <laughs> oh, definitely. Now, that's one of the things that I find cool about your show. You mentioned that um, when you were doing the in-person, especially, you were saying that you were going to hit a city up and, you know, uh, let's do a podcast, for example. Uh, and your show has a huge variety of guests. I mean, one week you might be t- speaking to Craft Brewer, for example, and the next you're talking to someone that's just like, put their body through hell with a Tough Mudder course and, you know, <laughs> some uh, endurance uh, programs, ex- endurance courses and triathlons, etc. So is there a formula for who you think would be a good guest for the show? And for your listeners, or has that sort of evolved as the time's gone by as well? Well, I definitely had and and still have to this day. I keep a running list of guests I think would be interesting or, or guests I think that are a good fit for this show. But at the end of the day, for me, well, it, so it started off with, all right, well, who do you know? Who do you know that has an interesting story? And as luck would have it, it was really interesting. I happened to have gone to high school with some really 
some people that have gone on to do some really neat things and some people that quite honestly weren't that interesting or or becoming in high school that have now gone on to achieve some some real and to do some really neat projects so that was number one. It was really cool to kind of go through and connect with people uh, that I hadn't seen for a long time. But the, again, the original premise was, who do I know that are exemplifying a lifestyle by design? And that has really kind of been a, a key for the eight. That, that's the backbone of the eight keys to great. And it's really has become a big theme for the show. It's how are you crafting your lifestyle? Like you talked about for you, for example, you guys decided to get out of the big city and, and move to a location that uh, gave your kids a better environment for, their, for them to grow up in. And for me, that's a huge aspect that I feel like we've gotten away from. I, I think that we've gotten so focused on money and fortune and success, which I think success is an important part of the equation. Uh, but we've forgotten about some of that lifestyle aspects that are so important. So really with my guests, it's like, what? how are they living an amazing lifestyle? And if they're living a lifestyle by design, by their own design, then there's somebody I want to talk to. Mm. And it's interesting you mentioned about the, you know, the, the, the fact that obviously my family moved to a quieter place. I know you made some big changes to the to life that you guys were living do you think that with COVID, obviously it's having a major impact on how, how people work? You know, a lot of companies are making people stay at home, etc. Do you think it's allowing people the time to sort of breathe a bit and take stock and they may even change their own approaches to how they want to live? Post, I mean, it's not going to be a post-COVID if you like, but once, say, a vaccine is widespread, etc. And, and we're kind of back to semi-normality. Do you think it's a, it's a big opportunity for people to reset their lives at this stage? Well, I, I think there's a tremendous amount of opportunities coming from all of this. Um, but unfortunately, um, I think we've seen a lot of negative consequences from that. It's been real easy for us and myself included, I mean, I'll put myself at the top of the list to, you know, dive heavy into social media and to spend more time on Netflix maybe than we normally would and to get into some unproductive behaviors. And I think really, particularly at first, uh, for myself personally, I found myself falling into that trap quite a bit. Um, and, and, and for what it's worth, you know, we, uh, I just was lucky enough to start crafting this lifestyle design idea and concept about a year, year and a half before this hit. So I feel incredibly blessed and lucky that I was already kind of laying the groundwork for this when all of this hit. And it sounds like that was the same case for you, for you guys. You had fortunately been kind of taking steps to get right before all this happened. And then when this happened, you were then better prepared for that. And I think uh, for myself as well, we were very fortunate that that was the case. But for a lot of people, that was not the case. A lot of us, that this caught us with our pants down. You know, we just were really caught off guard. Um, but now that it's, there's opportunity. We, we're, we're seeing our, our work be redefined. We're seeing our job descriptions be redefined. We're seeing our day-to-day -day activities be redefined. And I think that provides opportunity to really begin to craft our lifestyle. This is the really an eye-opening slap in the face, if you will, to say, okay, what is your lifestyle look like? What am I doing every day? How, what has my life turned into as a result of COVID? Has it gotten better? Has it gotten worse? And if so, what am I going to do about that? And so I think it's given us all a big kind of a bit of a reality check. Now, you mentioned earlier the show has really taken off. Um, and even though you had to sort of flip it a little bit, going from an in-person interview to the remote side, it still continues to grow and it's really taken off nicely for you. Um, and it's been going for about, what, is it 18 months? And I think it was like last May when, when you published it. Have there been any episodes that have sort of stood out for you? over others, not for any better reasons or whatever, but they just, for whatever reason, connected with you. And, and if so, why that one or why these shows in particular? Uh, yeah, I'll give you a, a good one and a bad one. Um, <laughs> but before I do that, I, there is something to be said about that 18-month rule. And I'm really glad that you brought that up because as podcasters, or, or I'll, and again, I'll just speak for myself, as a podcaster, you know, that first year, I felt like I was really putting out some great content. And nobody's listening, man. <laughs> it's crickets out there. And, and, and I, get, I use Libsyn, which provides a tremendous amount of uh, information, background, demographics, and all this kind of stuff, which is great when you have people that are listening. 
but it's incredibly depressing when you don't. Um, and and uh, I, like many people, thought of podcasting as this this growth curve would be a diagonal line where you would you know, just gradually start to build, start to grow and whatnot. But I listened to um, Justin Schneck has a podcast and really smart guy. And he talked about it's an exponential curve. It's not a straight line. And really when... He said, or he's got that 18 month rule where he says around that 18 months, around that, you know, 60, 75 episode mark is when you begin to, if you've got a good product, you begin to see some, some things take off and you begin to see some growth and some sustainability. And, you know, knock on wood, that was, appears to be what is the case for me. And I hate to even say it out loud because <laughs> having lived in the dark for so long, I'm so scared every day that it's going to go back to that. You just never know. But um, but as far as episodes go, um, the, the episode, I have an episode called Three Habits in 30 Minutes. And for what it's worth, I have done a quite a bit of promoting of that episode. And it's also one of my shortest. So I don't know what that tells you. But um, that episode has really done well. It's done substantially better than any other episode by far um leaps and bounds um and i don't know why and i don't can't put again like i said i do promote that one because it's a it's a short self-help tool that helps establish a morning routine um but that episode has taken off and it's been that episode has given me the confidence to really move forward with my eight keys to great um but i'll tell you the opposite of that um right about that same time or shortly thereafter i did an episode with a grammy award winning artist speech from arrested development he's a hip hop guy he's he's old school you know i'll give you that he's from my generation kind of 90s hip hop and um and whatnot but i mean the guy won two or three grammys arrested development i mean they're still their music is still relevant it's still being played they played it at some of the falcons games i mean it's they're 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 somewhat relevant and I, and i did a really great job preparing for this interview spent a lot of time getting ready and met him down at this place we videotaped it in 4k high definition and it was this amazing experience he had a blast it went way longer than what he had allotted for but he, like i kept trying to end it and he kept it going so i'm like <laughs> Man, this is amazing. And then at the end, he's like, man, we should do this again. And I'm like, just, oh, it was so great. And then I go back and listen. And the, I felt like the interview went great. I just thought I knocked it up. I'm like, okay, validation. This is my thing. I'm, ah, oh, yes, you know, finally. And um, I publish it like a couple of weeks later. One of my worst episodes. Wow. Nobody, especially right out of the gate. No, I mean, you talk about crickets. I mean, mm -hmm. I was shocked. I mean, because I my podcast had kind of been building a little bit of momentum at that point, and so I'm really thinking that the the concept is working, and I've got this amazing guest to go with the great concept, and it tanked, man. And and the whole podcast for the next couple of weeks did not do very well, and and so it was like, man, that was a tough time. It was really where you started to question. Am I? Is this what I'm supposed to be doing? But now we know you like you're into definitely like endurance sports. Um, you, you know you do triathlons, marathons, stuff, murder, etc. Does that help you when you were mentioning like an episode like that, for example? You think you know what I've got it here. This is a golden ticket, so to speak, and we're going to knock out the park. I'm going to grab a, a thousand new subscribers overnight, yeah. and then it tanks, like you're saying, and it still it still plateaus with that sort of low audience number. Does that kind of does the stamina you need? and the endurance you need for your physical life, transport over to the podcast when you see stuff like that to keep you going. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I'm obviously a big fan of endurance sports. Um, and one of my mottos or one of my little things, and if you go to the website, I actually have a challenge there, and it's called uh, it's Running a Marathon Challenge. And it's just how to walk someone through um, training and completing a marathon. And I think and I believe that everyone should go through either that experience or something like that, because in the marathon, you hit this classic thing called a wall where the wheels fall off. Everything goes astray. You feel like you're broken. Most people assume it's an injury. Oh, I you know, broke my IT band or I tore my ACL or I mean, like literally they think that they're, you know, on death's doorstep and. If you can keep going, if you learn how to push through that wall, and most of the time you're just walking at that point. So it's not even like you're, you know, going and, you know, 
having this big aha moment at the end. But if you'll just persevere and, and see that through, it gives you this mental toughness. It gives you this edge that you learn that you're capable of more than what you thought you were. And I think that once you do that, it's like a, it's an extra bullet in your, in your holster. You know, it's an extra little something that you, it's an extra ace up your sleeve. And I think that you, that serves you well when it comes to any kind of business or podcasting or anything that's going to be hard or difficult to, to achieve. And if you do that enough times, then you realize, man, they're, you're capable of some really amazing things. Now, and speaking of that, your show um, obviously it pulls from your own experiences and, and the guests that you have on it, um, you know, alludes to your own experiences and and moving from corporate into the life that you and your family have now. And you, you plan for you and your family, and as you mentioned, the eight keys to great program and and everything that's attached to that. What was the moment that you pivoted and and you realised, you know what, this because you had a really successful corporate life. Um, you know, corporate background, and you 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 mentioned success earlier, Nate, where you know success is important, but but you stepped away from that, so to speak, or you stepped away from that success to a new success. So, what was the moment that 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 sort of light went off on, and you just thought, "I'm doing this, and this is why." Well, it's funny because I've actually had a couple of those, but I mean, I've been. I feel incredibly blessed and incredibly fortunate because so many of the opportunities that. I've gotten have I have just stumbled upon. Um, for what it's worth, I mean, I I feel like I do have a pretty good plan and vision now, <laughs> but most of my life that certainly was not the case. A lot of these opportunities, where it, a lot of it was just being in the right time and the right place, and and a lot of times just knowing the right people. Um, I, I every I was reflecting back on this as I was trying to write some for this book and get some of this work done, and and trying to because when I would going through the ranks and as you're in the moment, you don't always have time to reflect back on what you've been able to achieve or or where you're at at this stage in your life or things you've done well or even things you've done bad. Um, So it wasn't until I got into this stage of this podcast and this personal development thing that I did some of that reflection. And I I thought going into it, I was going to be, I felt a little disappointed. Like, well, you know, I maybe haven't had all the financial success that some people have. I'm not this multimillionaire living, you know, I don't have the boat and the mansion on the hill and all that kind of stuff because that was my mindset, you know. But then as I started going through this personal development process and really identifying okay, well, what do you want your life to look like in 10 years? What are the things that you want to have in it? What are those material possessions if you could have anything that you want? And through going through developing the process of of determining that, I realized that I didn't put a lot of value on some of these material things. My values and what I placed importance was on family and like being at my kid's soccer game and like, or like be, more probably being able to be the coach for my kid's soccer mm-hmm. team and, you know, some of all these different, again, and I started realizing, well, you know, it's really not so much about the, the money, the success. Success is very important because I think success leaves uh, characteristics and traits that are very important. But when it's so tied up into money, into the financial side of it, then there's these other things that get neglected, these other things that get removed. And when you can va- when you can realize your success based on the lifestyle that you're able to craft, when you're able to value success on how you spend your day, okay, well, now we're on to something. Now we can kind of say, okay, well, let's craft a lifestyle that allows me to have the day that I want to have the everyday day. Now, you know, the, I, I want to live on a dream beach and drink pina coladas. Okay. Well, that's a <laughs> fantasy and that's going to be fun for about a month until you're 500 pounds and a drunk, but you know, and, and with a sunburn, but how do you want to spend that everyday day? And I think that that's what's really fascinating to me about you is that you guys began crafting that with your move out to the getting out of the city and saying like, cause I'm a big believer, like that connecting with nature, that getting back to your roots, like walk, just walking in the woods, you know, just hearing the birds chirp and the little squirrel digging around in the dirt and whatever. It seems stupid, but I think there's meaning in that. I think there's purpose in that. And I think that 
having that as part of our lives is necessary for our overall health. So for me, that's what it, what it came down to is, all right, well, how can I craft my life and my everyday activities to do what do I love, what I love and what I really enjoy? So th- then it came down to, okay, well, what do I love? What do I enjoy? How am I going to spend my day? And that takes a little bit of thought and that takes a little bit of time because for what I thought was going to make me happy and what I thought it was how I want to spend my day wasn't accurate. And it wasn't through continual morning meditation and affirmations and going through this, some of this process of figuring some of that out that, okay, now I've gotten some clarity to what that needs to look like. And so now I spend every day trying to visualize that and make it happen. I, I know what you mean. My wife, um, she suffers from anxiety. My she runs like a mental health blog to, to speak about her experiences. And awesome. one of the things she did when we moved out here is she really started listening to a lot of Jim Quick. Um, and uh, I love that her. guy. <laughs> Before you said that, what's the name of her blog? Um, it's Mental Health and Me. And, and tell me her name because I didn't catch it. Oh, her name's Jacqueline. Jacqueline Brown. Jacqueline. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah, she, she took a break over the sort of winter while we we're doing the move and everything, but she's getting back into that through a podcast, funnily enough. <laughs> I have no idea where that idea would have come from. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I completely agree that the move here made all the difference with just being, you know, waking up one morning, seeing deer walk across like the backyard. You think, what? <laughs> where did that come from? Amazing. Now, it's plain to see you're like a dedicated family man. Where we were speaking earlier about your kids and, you know, you mentioned there about, you know, wanting to be the, the coach for the soccer team and being involved in, in your kids' and lives and making sure that you're there for them. With the show um, and, and the podcast, getting so many different insights from people living lives on their own rules or by their own rules, if, if you like, has that helped you have the insights? insights insights even (laughs) have they helped you be more a part of the family for want of a better description have you found out have you have you always been the 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 family person uh well yeah so for what it's worth i have two i have a total of five kids and my two oldest boys are are i call them adults now one of them's halfway through college the other one's finished college and, and he's out doing his own thing living his own life so um Yes, to to your point, I have always been a bit of a family man, um, and and family's always been something that's very important to me. Now I'm also halfway through my second divorce, so for what it's <laughs> worth, you know, I've also had some struggles in that area as well. But it's certainly something that's very important to me. Um, I I try to steal something from every guest I talk to. Uh, And I know that every person that I talk to, whether they're a guest on the show or not, they have some kind of value to bring to the table. They have some knowledge that I can take from. They have something that I can benefit from. So um, that is a a big goal of each each interview that I have is to extrapolate the things that they're doing. Um, And so, yeah, to a man, every single person I interview, I'm, I'm gaining all kind of information from. And, you know, uh, is it Jim Rowan has got a really great quote that says, you're the average of the five people that you spend the most time with. Well, so if I'm spending my time with all these brilliant people and all these amazing guests, then hopefully some of that stuff's rubbing <laughs> off on me a little bit. Now, you mentioned, obviously, that, that, that your goal for the show is to extrapolate, you know, uh, insight or something from at least one thing from every guest. Um, so with that in mind, what's your goals for the show? You're 18 months in. Uh, you were, you're now at a nice part of your growth uh, period, if you like. Um, so what's your plans to, to scale that and expand either, you know, once in, in person interviews back on the line again or, or whatever? Yeah, so we've been fortunate to get back to some in-person interviews. Um, my, uh, I had a recent not the one that's out right now, but the one before that was with Eric Nine, uh, who is a local Atlanta artist, amazing talent. We got to do our interview in person. Um, I have another really interesting one coming up with Nathan Ruff. Um, he's got a fascinating business, and the kid's 27 years old and just uh, got the world at his feet. And so that's, again, one we got to do in person. I'm really excited to get that one out there. Um, but as far as scaling it, I like the fact that it's opened me up to interviewing um, more than just who I can get in person. The neatest thing about the COVID thing for me has been the international guests. I've spent more time in the Australian time zone (laughs) in the past month than I have in my entire life. And I've I've got to interview guests in Japan, uh, Spain. I've been interviewed in Spain. I was interviewed in London. 
um yeah so like this this thing went international kind of overnight and that's been tremendously exciting um so i hope to continue with that and as far as the future of the show i think it's ultimately going to go into a couple of different directions um i hope to continue to get higher profile guests kind of like the ryan holidays and the um the Tim Ferrises of the world that are still within this vein, but living a, an interesting lifestyle or, or still fit within my parameters. One thing I'm not interested in doing is interviewing celebrity or going after celebrity status or stardom or anything like that. Uh, Cause I, or, or quite frankly, uber successful, like the billionaire types. Um, and primarily because I, what I've found is those types of people don't fit my uh, profile. They don't fit my definition of what success and lifestyle design looks like. So I don't have much of a desire to go that direction. Uh, the desire that I have started to go down or the the path I've started to go down to, um, aside from the getting bigger and more exciting guests is, or more high profile guests rather, is I've also been getting some people that I didn't know so kind of going the opposite way. So more of that ordinary person trying to craft a lifestyle by design um, through some of the coaching that I'm doing and the the self help development program. It's given me access to a lot of people that have a lot of potential and have their own cool little story to share. And as I've interviewed them, I've gotten some really neat takeaways and insights on number one, how to provide a better personal development program, but two things that I've been missing from doing some of these higher profile interviews. So it's been really neat to add that into the mix as well. So I'm hoping to kind of theme some of those out a little bit as we continue to grow. Cool. And then obviously that will tie into your program, as you mentioned, and then maybe, you know, a little sub training off of there. It seems to, I find it a lot of times, which is pretty cool, a podcast is a great ideation place for so many other cool things to happen. And it, it comes, as you mentioned, because you've guests that spark something in your head thinking, man, I'm really going to try that now. That sounded really cool. Well, it's the coolest part about these experiences is like when you have meaningful conversations and it's not just a, you know, a diatribe of somebody just spewing their book topic or whatever the case is, when you can actually have good conversation, it's amazing what comes from it. My buddy Walker Near has a really cool show called The Walk Show podcast and the conversations that he gets into with guests are so engaging. I mean, it reminds me a ton of the whole Joe Rogan thing, uh, but it's really uh, it's really engaging for the listener to see where they go with it. And I really find it appealing. Now, and speaking of that, you're, you've got a show that's been going for 18 months now um, and you've got ideas as to where you want it to go You know, over the next 18 months, for example. For someone that was thinking of coming into the podcasting industry, um, either you know within your niche or just like in podcasts in general, what would be your one piece of advice you would give them? Uh, I give this advice out con- uh, quite a bit on the Facebook groups and in some of the forums, and it's consistency. Uh, show up the same time, the same day, always. Whether that's if you're if you decide it's once a week, then do once a week. If it's once every two weeks, then do once every two weeks. If it's once a day, do it once a day. But whatever you do, stick to that. And and for me, I've I've been really good about the weekly, being very consistent, making sure that I got something out every week. But where I got off was the timing. Like I would make sure it would go off that week, but sometimes it would be Monday at noon. Other times it would be Sunday at midnight. And but it, so there was some flexibility there, and I got off track there. Um, and I think it that hindered the growth of my podcast. And so what I encourage everyone is to think about it like a television show. You know, if you're from an older generation like me, you remember, you know, hey, Thursday night, eight o'clock, you know, Seinfeld's coming on or or whatever your show of choice was at that particular day and time. And you showed up for it. And when you can do that for your listeners, they'll keep showing up. Mm-hmm. They'll, they'll show up every, and they'll hear what you have to say. And if your stuff is good, they'll keep listening. Now, if it's not good, they'll tune you out eventually. But <laughs> but they will listen if you show up every single day or if you show up consistently. But if you don't, and that first time you miss, man, you feel it. And you see it in the numbers. And every time, every listener you lose, I I question if you'll ever get them back. And mm-hmm. I and the thought of losing a listener um, when they're so precious to me. Um, that's terrifying. (laughs) 
Well, I like the point you made about TV there. Like on Sunday night at 8 o'clock, you always knew what show was coming on. Uh, so you'd sit down, you'd get your popcorn, whatever you were doing. Yeah, and whether it's Game of Thrones or Seinfeld back in my day, you, you still showed up, you know. Exactly. And and the fact that podcast is so accessible, you know, you get that little notif- notification light on your phone to say, hey, new podcast just dropped, new episode just dropped. So I really like that, you know, that consistency, but not just for the regular, you know, weekly event, but the time, you know, the day and the time, it's, it, it all builds out the whole brand of the podcast up. And think about this, when you were watching that TV show, you only had, let's say you had extended package cable, 100 pa- hundred other channels to choose from they have 350,000 other podcasts they can go listen to yeah. so don't think for a second that somebody else isn't going to snatch them up no for sure you've had a, as we mentioned earlier you've had a, a, a great lineup of different guests um you know from you know sort of semi celebrity and, and others that are celebrities obviously to people coming through the ranks of your like but all have these cool stories um and and your own life has, has been shaped in various ways because of you know experiences you've had so if you were to to name one person that stands out as a hero for you personal hero you know um fitness hero endurance hero whatever who would it be and why that person uh, it, would, it would probably end up being my parents as much as uh, it's kind of a cheesy an answer <laughs> as that is. Um, I have been blessed to come from great stock. Um, and you talk about some of the interesting guests I have had on the show. Um, several of those guests have been a result of the relationship with my parents as opposed to a relationship that I had. And they were kind enough to um, to set those opportunities up for me. Um, and you talk about me being into endurance sports. Well, that seed was planted very early on with my f- parents. They both have, were active marathon runners with me growing up. They've always been into athletics. And um, as triathlon became a sport and grew into a, a popular sport, uh, they grew right along with that. And for any physical accomplishment that I've done, they have done that 20 years older. And then <laughs> something like, so like anything that I've done, that's the slightest bit impressive. I say, go take a look at my, my mother, for example, you know, I've was fortunate enough to be able to do a couple of Ironman triathlons. It's 140 plus miles or whatever. And that's a that's a feat in of itself but doing those if you if you qualify if you place high enough then you qualify to go to the world championships in Kona Hawaii and that's the one you see on TV and it's a real big deal and like for somebody like me I mean I there's no chance of me ever getting the, at least not for the next 20 years anyway of getting an opportunity to be fast enough to go do that well she qualified to go do that at 69 years old I believe she was and, and and went to Hawaii, did Kona, which is one of the toughest Ironman races out there. And three weeks later, three weeks later, was back in Florida doing the race with me and and my sister uh, and our brother. So, um, so you talk about heroes. You talk about an example. Um, I like to toot my own horn. I like to think I'm something special. But all I got to do is take a look down in Orlando, Florida to get humbled real quick. <laughs> so goals for you, yourself when you're like 69, 70 year old. You say, okay, yeah. you know what? So I've got 20 more years of doing this before I can even <laughs> come close to doing what they're doing. So yeah, I got my work cut out for me. Wow, that's awesome. I I couldn't imagine, you know, when I was reading like the the stuff that you do personally, I couldn't imagine being 70 and doing that or 69 sorry, and 70 and doing that stuff as well. I was like, wow, really? That's that's incredible. It's pretty amazing. They're uh well, and it, what I like about their story is that it just shows you what's possible. It just shows you how much of our day-to-day lives is we live in a limited mindset of what we don't of what we think is not possible. My mother just got done um with reconstructive knee surgery. I mean had the entire knee replaced so she could keep running. And and then now she's closer to 75, you know, and but she had that surgery done because she's still in shape, because she's still active and wants to be able to continue to do that. And when you do that for Year after year, decade after decade, and you and I get to look and see the result of that long term lifestyle. I mean, why, how could I not come up with a program that's about lifestyle design? You know, no, for sure, exactly. 
So, Ned, this has been an absolute blast. I, I really enjoyed chatting with you today. Um, for people that want to check out your podcast or your Eight Keys to Great program, or even if they want to find out how to run a marathon and start training for a marathon, where's the best people can find you and connect with you online? Uh, well, it's the Extraordinary Podcast, um, and it's a giant EXO logo. This isn't a video um recording but if you could see my shirt you'd see the logo there um it's a giant black and white exo so it's real uh hard to miss um and you can find that on all the major platforms uh itunes spotify um that is my that is we've got an instagram page as well um if you want to go to eight keys to great.com that's the number eight keys the number two great dot com or dot net either one that'll take you to our primary site we also have an extraordinary podcast dot net site but the eight keys to great site has everything it's got the marathon challenge it's got some what i think are pretty good blog posts and pretty funny they talk about stories there's some pretty good stories in some of those blog posts that you can find the, all the podcast episodes there and if you want to go through the eight keys to great program uh, it's 100 percent free uh, it's all accessible on the website um, the only way that you can see the entire program is, it, number one, you have to give me your email, um, and then you can only see the next step by completing the first step or the next key until you complete the key that you're on. So you can't just see the whole thing at a glance. You actually have to do the work in order to gain access. But it's free. Um, there's no financial obligation. Um, and, the, and the email is just simply so that I can uh, send emails and blogs, posts, and, um, and new podcasts when they come out. So thank you, Danny, so much for having me. This was amazing. And I felt like I've done way too much talking. <laughs> <laughs> not, not at all. And I'll be sure to leave all the links to the website, your social channels, etc., where they can find the program uh, and the show notes. So if you're listening to the show on your favorite podcast app, be sure to check out the uh, the show notes as usual, and you'll find all the links for Nate's uh, uh, website and details there. So like I mentioned, Nate, thanks a lot for appearing. I really appreciate it today. Yeah, and I'll be sure to plug uh, your podcast on all of my stuff, and um, we'll keep that circle going, man. Keep doing what you're doing. This stuff, this kind of stuff is so important, man, and I love the direction that you're headed and grateful to be a part of it. Awesome. Thank you. All right, so this has been another episode of Podcast Stories. If you enjoyed this week's show, uh, be sure to share it with someone you might find, you know, who might find it useful. And, you know, you can check it out on all the main podcast channels, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and more. Or just hop over to podcaststories.com and you can find the latest episode there. Until the next time, stay safe and take care.